Okay, so um, hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Leah Zeman. I'm an audiologist at Geneva Hearing Services, and this is a Hearing 101 seminar. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, I know it's a beautiful day outside, so thank you for um, you know, deciding to attend our seminar today. I'm very excited to get started. Um, so again, my name is Dr. Leah Zeman. I have been an audiologist at Geneva Hearings since June of 2016. Um, and I have loved working with Geneva Hearing Services. I, our patients are amazing, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of this team. Um, so this is the rest of our team um, that you will see when you come visit us at our office. Um, we have four providers. So this is our family portrait. It does need to be updated, <clears throat> um, but we are just all very excited to help all of our patients in any way that we can. Um, so today we will go over some common questions that I um, get asked a lot. Um, sometimes there is confusion about what a hearing aid actually is. Um, questions from those who have never used them before and even those who have been wearing them for many, many years. Um, there is a lot of information floating around out there about hearing devices and it can be a little confusing as to what information you should pay attention to and what can be ignored. Um, my parents have also been getting a lot of advertisements about hearing and hearing devices um, and they'll save them to show them to me when I come home to visit. Um, and my aunts will send me some pictures of advertisements and ask me about them as well. Um, but the most common question that I get is, what's the difference between hearing aids that you can get at Walgreens or um, the kind that are fit by an audiologist? Um, so if any of these questions or concerns resonated with you, you're not the only one to have that thought. Um, and we will address these today. So other topics that we'll be covering are just a general overview of how our hearing system works, um, what hearing loss is and the effects that it can have, and then how we as audiologists can help you. And just a little cartoon um, to just kind of explain how <laughs> hearing loss can cause some issues with communication. Um, just something that I always find humorous. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Okay, so first and foremost, we will go over what an audiologist is. Um, as some of you may be wondering what exactly it is that we do. So an audiologist is someone who is a hearing care professional who has a doctoral degree um, or a master's degree from an accredited program and we can diagnose, manage, and treat hearing and or balance disorders. Now there is another profession that does something similar to what we do, but it's not exactly the same. Um, that profession is called a hearing instrument specialist or dispenser. Um, audiologists are those who graduate um, so those who now who graduate now have at least a doctoral degree um, and we have to pass a national exam and obtain 20 hours of continuing education every two years. And that's to ensure that we're keeping up with the latest discoveries. A specialist or dispenser has to have at least an associate's degree. They complete 12 semester hours of academic and undergraduate work, and they have to pass a state written and practicum exam. So the primary difference between an audiologist and a hearing specialist is the level of training and the scope of practice. So Walgreens attempted to provide audiology care with specialists, but that program failed and no longer exists. Um, to give another example of an audiologist's scope of practice and what we are able to do. Um, as you can see here, so this graph, this table has a list of everything that um, audiologists are trained in. Highlighted are um, 
what we receive extensive training in, in that little box there. So you may be asking yourself, well, what does this mean for me? An audiologist that um, you'll work with is a professional who has extreme knowledge of the rehabilitative process. We can work closely with your physician and can also tie your hearing loss to other medical issues. So an audiologist can determine if your hearing loss is due to an ear infection and needs medical attention or if it's permanent and requires hearing devices. Um, specialists and dispensers do hearing evaluations for the purpose of selling hearing aids. So why do we do what we do? Um, our entire team at Geneva Hearing is dedicated to ensuring that our patients are hearing at their very best. And for, as for our providers, we were all introduced to audiology through different paths. So my personal story is that I grew up with a grandma who had hearing loss um, and she was very stubborn and it was never her fault that she couldn't hear everybody. Um, it was because we were mumbling or we don't project when we speak, but if her window was open and her TV was on, you could hear her program across the street. Um, so we would joke about it, but it did have a serious emotional impact on her. Um, she would become very withdrawn, both at family events and with friends. Um, and she would stop getting together with friends at social events or even just going out to lunch or dinner or to grab a coffee with someone. At family gatherings, she would sit off to the side um, and she would always tell me how great it was watching the family spend the day together rather than participate in those family gatherings. So I wanted to find something that was going to help her um, to become part of the conversation again, and that's how I found audiology. But that is just my story. Um, if you want to know everyone else and how they found audiology, then you'll just have to come in and visit us and ask. Um, but the bottom line is that we want to help because 48 million Americans have hearing loss. Um, so I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. Um, 48 million Americans have hearing loss. So that means one in five people experience hearing loss great enough to hinder their ability to communicate. Hearing loss is also one of the most common health issues in the world, which is why it's so important to know that if you or a loved one has loss, that they're not alone and there is help. But first, a little background information on how our hearing actually works. So we have three parts to the ear. We have the outer ear, which is the part you can see in the ear canal. We have the middle ear, which is your eardrum and the space behind it, which houses these three tiny little bones. And then there's the inner ear, and this holds your hearing and balance organs. Okay, so we'll go into a little bit more detail about the outer, middle, and inner ear. Um, but a fun fact is that those three tiny little bones that I referred to, they're called the ossicles, and they are the smallest bones in your body. Um, they are called the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, but you may have heard them referred to as the anvil, hammer, and the stirrup, and they are so tiny that all three of them can fit on one penny. So let's take a closer look at our hearing organ. Um, and that's located again in our inner ear. And it is that snail shell shaped um, object right there. Um, so the hearing organ, the cochlea, has hundreds of tiny little hair cells that are sitting in fluids. Um, and there are rows and rows of hair cells um, that look like this. And when sound passes over those hair cells, they move back and forth. And that movement sends an electrical signal up to the brain. Now these hair cells are like the keys of a piano. 
And when certain ones are simulated, they send a certain note or key up to the brain. So they all have an important role in making sure that we're hearing everything to its absolute fullest. So if you think about it, the physical parts of our ears are just the antennas. And it's actually the brain that does all of the processing and understanding um, of the sounds in our environment. And the thing about the brain is that it's a muscle. Um, how it gets its exercise is by being used. So if the part of the brain that processes sound is not being stimulated properly, then it can weaken and atrophy and kind of wither away. And the integrity of our brain can become compromised if it's not corrected right away. And okay. So what do we mean when we say the type of hearing loss that you have? Well, the type of hearing loss indicates where in your ear the hearing loss actually occurs. And there are two different types. If you remember, there are three parts of the ear and a conductive hearing loss occurs in the outer or middle ear. So it's that highlighted portion right there. And common causes can be excessive earwax, ear infections, eustachian tube dysfunction. Um, it could be a physical abnormality, fluid in the ear, um, head trauma, a perforated eardrum, or some other type of medical pathology. Now, most conductive hearing losses can be corrected with medicine or surgery, but not all of them can. If a conductive hearing loss is found, it's best to see your primary care physician or an ear, nose, and throat physician for any kind of medical intervention that might be appropriate. So what does a conductive hearing loss sound like? Well, imagine that you have earplugs in. You may still be able to hear the person, but their voice is lowered. Um, so here is a visual as to what a conductive hearing loss is like. So if we take this sentence, hearing loss is one of the most common health issues in the world. It is also one of the most treatable. That sentence is um, easy to read, just as it would be easy to hear. But with a conductive hearing loss, you can see that um, you can still read the sentence, you can still hear it, but it's just a little muted. Um, so sound is much quieter since it's being blocked from getting into the ear. The other type of hearing loss and the most common is a sensory neural hearing loss. And this is when the loss occurs in the inner ear or along the nerve, um, such as damage to those hair cells um, or again along the hearing nerve itself. So here's just another picture of those hair cells that are in our hearing organ. And these are healthy hair cells. So you can see that the rows and the shapes are clearly defined and all of those piano keys are in place. They're all intact and they're healthy and they can accurately detect sound waves to send the signals up to the brain. However, they can become damaged or they even go missing. So as you can see in that picture on the right, um, some of the hair cells are limp, they're blown down, they're no longer standing erect. These hair cells are unable to transmit sounds as effectively to the brain. And unfortunately, this type of damage is permanent and it cannot be reversed. Um, so sensory neural or permanent hearing loss can be caused by many things. Some common causes include excessive noise exposure, um, medications can sometimes cause damage to your hearing, um, but they may be important for other health concerns. Um, it may be related to age, a medical pathology, it could just be our genetics, which we can't control, um, or it may be due to a disease or another syndrome or it's idiopathic, meaning we just don't know why it's there. Now, when I say noise, um, I'm talking about a certain level of noise. 
So although my grandma raised five kids and it was probably quite noisy in their house, um, that kind of noise most likely did not cause her hearing loss later in life. The kind of noise I'm referring to is noise from working in factories or with loud equipment like power tools um, or equipment used for farming, or it can come from repeatedly listening to loud music through headphones, um, like many teenagers do these days. So there are organizations who will monitor noise levels in work settings, and they have set guidelines in place to reduce the risk of noise-induced hearing loss. So this may be modifying the equipment itself or having the employees wear hearing protection. Um, as for music, headphones for children have set limits on how loud they can get. And most music devices have a warning if you are exceeding the recommended volume. The thing about noise is that the damaging effects are not instantaneous, but they are delayed. So the hearing loss may not show up until many, many years later. Um, but it can happen in an instant if sound is, if it's loud enough. For example, when you are exposed to 120 decibels of sound, you can experience permanent hearing loss in less than just 10 seconds. So very important that if you are in any type of loud environment, that you protect your ears with earplugs or over the ear earmuffs. So you may be asking how this type of hearing loss is different from the conductive hearing loss. So here is that same sentence. Um, as you remember with a conductive hearing loss, the whole sentence was harder to read or harder to hear. Um, but with a sensory neural hearing loss, it's a lot more complicated. Um, it's a little bit more distorted. So you can hear some of the speech sounds clearly, but not all of them. Patients often describe this as, I'm aware someone is speaking, but I don't always understand what they said. And that's because you're missing important speech sounds responsible for the clarity of the word. So your brain fills in the blanks based on the content of the conversation, um, but sometimes it may not fill in the sounds correctly. And that can lead to friends or family needing to repeat themselves, or you may answer a question incorrectly or not to its fullest. So if you suspect that you have hearing loss or have noticed a change in your hearing, what should you do? Well, you would want to start with a diagnostic hearing evaluation, um, but don't wait too long. On average, the, a person will wait seven to 10 years between first noticing a change in their hearing and finally taking action. You don't want this to be you. You want to get your hearing checked by a professional as soon as you start to notice a change. And when you get that diagnostic hearing test done, your results are plotted on something called an audiogram. Now, you may be asking what exactly an audiogram is. Well, it's a graph that tells us how well you can hear sounds at various volumes and pitches. And that graph looks something like this. So from top to bottom of the graph is our volume with really soft sounds at the top and really loud sounds at the bottom. And how we test your hearing is you go into a sound treated booth and you listen for some beeps. And whenever you hear a beep, you're going to either raise your hand or push a button. So we play different tones, different piano keys at different volumes. And we look to see what the softest volume that piano note can be before your ears are able to detect it. Um, so we plot that on here. And from, if you look at this graph here, that yellow shaded area is where all of the speech sounds fall when they're spoken at a normal conversational level. So the lower bass tones, which are towards the left of the graph, um, they are the vowels of speech. And the vowels of speech give speech its power. It makes you aware that someone is speaking to you. But the consonant sounds, which are the higher pitch sounds to the right of the graph, give speech its clarity. 
um, allowing you to know what exactly it is someone that someone said. So you have to be able to hear the person's voice, but also understand what they're saying. So when we're done with the test, we mark how loud that particular note had to be before you were first able to detect it. So if your markings are at this line or above, you have normal hearing. If your marks fall below that line, that indicates that you have some hearing loss. So what exactly would that look like for you? Well, this is an example of what a typical permanent hearing loss would look like. The red circles represent your right ear and the blue X's represent your left ear. Now, any sound that falls below those red or blue lines are the sounds you are able to hear. And any sounds that fall above the red or blue lines are the sounds that you have difficulty hearing. So this person in particular would be missing all of the consonant sounds. So they may know someone is talking to them, but they might miss a word or under, misunderstand something. Um, just another fun fact, um, the loudest sound in nature is a volcanic eruption. And it was actually recorded in Krakatoa in 1883. And it's estimated as being 13,000 times as powerful as the atomic bomb dropped in Hiroshima. And it was heard up to 3,000 miles away. Um, so if anyone was close to that volcano, I'm sure they would have sustained some permanent hearing loss. So if you have hearing loss, what does this mean for you? What kind of impact is this going to have? Untreated hearing loss can be related to or lead to other medical issues, such as cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, depression, and it's also linked to Alzheimer's and dementia. Certain medications can also damage the hair cells in the inner ear, um, and it can put you at a higher risk for falling. Hearing is another part of your overall health. So if you go to the doctor once a year for your checkup and you go to the dentist to get your teeth checked and your eyes checked, um, hearing should be treated the same way. So not only are there physical ailments associated with hearing loss, but there are emotional ones as well. You can tire easily or quickly. Um, you may feel tense, have a negative outlook, or be under a lot of stress. You may get angry and irritable or even avoid or withdraw from social settings. Um, you might feel rejected or embarrassed and that can lead to being lonely. But hearing loss has a ripple effect on those around you. Um, oftentimes your loved ones can get frustrated because you need frequent re repetition of what they said um, they may misunderstand your withdrawal from situations due to not hearing well as being rude or uninterested in the conversation. And it can also cause them to worry about you because you may not be able to hear sirens, alarms, or the phone, or even the doorbell if someone is at the door. And finally, it can cause them to be confused. Um, especially if you answer incorrectly or incompletely due to mishearing the questions or not hearing it in its entirety. So what are some things that we can do? Um, there are some solutions that can help improve your communication. So having good communication strategies can definitely help. Things that you can do would be to make sure you have a clear line of sight of the person you're speaking with, reduce as much background noise as possible. So that would be turning the television down or turning the kitchen sink off before speaking. You can also position yourself so that most of the noise is behind you. Um, asking for clarification and not just asking for repetition. Um, so for example, if your daughter tells you that they'll be coming over for a visit at three, and you missed what time they said, you can ask what time will you be coming over instead of just saying what. 
This lets them know that you're listening. You just missed a key piece of information and it can reduce a lot of frustration during conversations. So communication is a two-way street. Um, things that your loved ones can do would be to get your attention first, slow their rate of speech, and then they can also rephrase something. Um, sometimes the words need to be in a different order for the message to come across clearly. So going back to that example of your daughter saying they'll be over at three, if you're still having a hard time asking or understanding what they're saying, they can rephrase it. At three o'clock, we'll come over. Um, that just may help get the message across more clearly. Um, but sometimes communication strategies are not enough. So in that case, um, amplification is going to be a helpful solution. Um, and hearing aids have been around for a long time, but they have definitely been improved on since needing that ear horn. So where should you start? There are a lot of advertisements out there marketed towards those over the age of 50 for hearing devices. And they can often be confusing, misleading, and even overwhelming. Here are some examples of some ads that you may have seen or will seen in the newspaper or on social media. Words like invisible may be enticing to some or only $4.99 per device. Well, that seems like a great deal. Others may say that they're looking for people for testing, um, but only the first 100 or so will be seen. Um, and this is another ad um, that my parents received that they were asking about too. Um, so if you think about how seeing ads like these might influence what you think about these devices, um, just imagine you saw an ad that said 50% off your knee replacement surgery by calling today. Um, I don't know about you, but I would not want to go to that office. Um, and ads like these can send the wrong message. It indicates that the hearing aid is a widget. It's a toy. It's nothing more than a device. Um, and don't be fooled, hearing aids are a medical device and they do serve a medical purpose. There is a lot more to hearing aids than you may think. So things to consider about hearing aids. Um, the technology. So yes, the hearing aid is a piece of technology and it's always changing. Manufacturers used to release new devices every two to three years, but now they release their advancements sometimes as often as every nine months. So in today's day and age, um, that those improvements are happening very quickly and you need someone to help guide you through those changes and determine which technology is appropriate for you. Um, you want to consider the durability and reliability. Hearing devices typically last anywhere from four to seven years before the technology inside starts to break down. So are you working with someone who can ensure that your hearing devices will work effectively and smoothly during that time? Are you getting a customized fitting? Hearing aids are not like glasses and they require a lot of follow-up and adjustments to get them set for your particular prescription. Um, there's also the warranty, um, what kind of guarantee or coverage is included. Manufacturers typically offer a two or three year warranty to ensure that any breakdowns that happen during that time period are covered. But the most important thing to consider is the professional advice that you receive. As mentioned earlier, most professionals have a doctorate or at least a master's degree with years of experience, so we're able to address all of your concerns. There are a lot of different types of hearing aids out there as well. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. The hearing aid may sit behind your ear um, and a thin tube or a wire comes down with a piece that sits in your ear. Some may be attached to a custom ear mold that is shaped for your ear only, or they may be completely in your ear, but different sizes. 
So they can look very different, but they all have the same purpose, and that is to help you hear. Um, hearing aids are also designed to accommodate and enhance a variety of different listening environments. So what you need will depend on how busy and active you are and what types of listening situations you frequently find yourself in. Um, how do you know how active you are? Um, well, that is something that your audiologist can help you determine. Um, so that brings me to why your audiologist matters. Over 60% of hearing aids are improperly fit to the patient's prescription. Um, all main manufacturers produce good products, um, but it's more about how well they are fit for your profile and lifestyle. And not all people who treat hearing loss have the same education. So you have to feel confident in the person behind your hearing device. Um, the hearing device by itself is just a hearing aid. How well it works for you depends on how well it's programmed and how well they're programmed depends on the background of the professional. So at Geneva Hearing, we work with you and your loved ones to help you hear at your best. And we're here to help you navigate through your hearing healthcare journey and we're with you every step of the way. So thank you so much for attending this seminar. Um, a little cartoon to send us off on our day. Um, but if there are any questions, uh, I am happy to answer them. So thank you so much and hope to see you guys soon. Um, hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks.